Welcome to my channel. Today I've got this M18 Red Lithium XC 5.0. What's curious about this one is it's a, it's a USA distributed one. I usually get the uh, European and Ireland and UK ones, which have a different font on them. They're called the Red Lithium 5.0. There's no XC on them, and the label on the bottom's different. But this has been sent to me to repair, and it's, it's a bit dirty, to say the least. So first thing I probably should do is clean it up a little bit and then I'll give it a little test, you know. Clean enough that I could probably have a look at it now. Um, I press the button. That button doesn't feel right. It's pushed in. There's something weird going on there. And... I'll just do a volt check on it. With the voltmeter attached, you can see it's showing 0.22 of a volt. And that's virtually nothing. It's not nothing. But it's near enough. So what's going on with the, the button? Obviously, it's showing nothing anyway because there's no voltage in it. The connection at the top sometimes gets broken there, but that one's okay. The terminals don't look too bad. Uh, just need to get on. With this out of the pack, we can do a individual cell bank test. There's five banks of two. This is how you test. We're going to see if we can not block the camera here. There's 0.04 of a volt there. There's nothing there. You can see that. Nothing. There's point not four and there's point not eight and there's point not something. There's one of them cells is showing nothing here I think. One of them cell banks that's showing nothing. Which is disturbing. Because if they're all showing something, maybe the jump start would be a possibility. But it's still worth trying. Feel that. All the cells would need to be replaced. Which you can probably do. As well, but it's a big job. I'm not always the greatest advocate of the jumpstart method. Of battery recovery. Um, you'll have seen it a million times before. You, set, you connect negative to negative and positive to positive. And jump the power from a good one into the bad one. And get it going again. Uh, this is the nuclear option because as you see things are Things are pretty dire with this battery. There's nothing. There's no voltage in it Or next to no voltage in it So what I'm going to do is In order to be safer than what most people do I monitor the voltage as I'm doing it So I can pull off the leads If it's getting too, you know Gives them too much a shock because you can actually fry the cells, but the condition these are cells are in at the moment, we have nothing to lose. We have literally nothing to lose with these cells. There'll be a spark, and you'll see this. There'll be a spike here. You'll see this voltage going up. And we want to get the voltage up to about well over 17, I would say, just to get down. Um, Hopefully she takes it. If we have an improvement. It's just um it's beating her. Get up there. No. We could give her another spike to see what she's gonna do. But this may may not work. Like I say it may not work.
think I need a bigger battery because my it's drained my other battery down. Hang on, I'll get another battery. Right, we'll just switch this battery over here. We'll have another one. Be careful not to touch these leads together. See, I strained that battery from three bars to one. It was a big jump, a big surge in power. This one has three bars, so let's go again. See if she can take it on up. We've only got the 13 volts. So we'll do another check in the cell banks here, all the way down. You see what voltage we're getting. That has recovered. That has recovered. That has recovered. Like I suspected. Because there was nothing in that, it didn't recover. So that's four out of the five. One, two, three, four has recovered, and these two have not because they were just there was no power in them. If there's anything in them at all, you have a good chance. If they're all very, very low and very, very equally low, you have a good chance. But if some are dead or much lower than the rest, you have no chance. So instead of having to replace the whole pack, you probably just have to pop out these two cells now. But we'll let that set to cool down before we do any more work to it. And we'll see if we can recover the pack. Given the pack a chance to cool down and I've got a couple of cells reclaimed from an old DeWalt battery. Also a 5.0. So the cells will be the same capacity roughly. And I've got them charged to around the same voltage. Which will make a difference across the pack. We're trying to get as balanced the pack as possible. If there's too much cell imbalance, the, the pack will not work. It'll not charge and it'll not go. If there's um too much a wee bit of cell imbalance, you'll not get a fully charged pack. You'll not get a, a pack that reaches its full potential and charge in 19 volts rather than 20, you know, or something like that. These are little protectors that you can put in the end of cells because the body's all coated in insulation here but the body's all the negative. This raised up part at this side is the positive. So the negative and the positive are very close here and you can get cross connection by accident which is bad. So that's, that's why we use these. I'll get these bad cells popped out here. You gotta be careful doing this. When you're working with a dead cell, it's not too bad. It's alive cells that are fully loaded with power. They can they can give you trouble. And plus, I failed to say that that uh, a jump start method has has its problems too. You could get into you could uh, you take a risk. You can put your cells on the thermal runaway, overheating and stuff, but usually the safety measures deactivates the cell before that happens, but it's not unheard of, so it's not impossible for that to happen. So be careful.
We should put these in the right way as well. They have a nice little rubber bumper between them, these uh, these Milwaukee ones, which I like. I think it's a good good feature. And she can bash the cells about inside the pack and it doesn't affect them too badly. I think that's something Milwaukee does well. Usually harder to get in, but this is good. That's the pack reassembled, you cells in, so we'll just throw it into the casing and see what happens. We'll just try the charger here now, see what happens. Now we're getting the charging light in on So we'll leave that on while I'm showing the one. Well it hasn't worked out. That uh, still showing a fault light. Still showing a flashing light. Even though it's with unchargeable voltage. So the only thing we can do now at this stage is open it again and replace the circuit board.
we've got to try it in the charger now. Let's see if we can have a success, finally. It's charging. See that? Two bars and it's charging. So we'll have to leave that a little while, see how it does. So a nice green light in the charger, that's what we're waiting on. Four bars. Charge battery is showing 19.8 in the voltmeter. This would indicate a slight bit of cell imbalance, but not crucial, not serious. And we'll try it on a tool to see what we've got. See if we've been working one. There was never any doubt. There we are, that's that battery fixed. Distributed in the USA, fixed in County Tyrone. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos.